you are watching the number one podcast in the whole entire tourism community. And I'm one of your hosts, Juanzo. And I'm your other host, Jean Paul Leck. And together we are Rope Break Family. It is the go home show for NXT before War Games, Jean Paul. And I think it was a pretty decent show. They got it excited. They have every single match that is going to happen on Sunday. So I think like mission accomplished on the on WWE. So welcome, Jean Paul, and tell me about your thoughts. Yeah, this episode, just the past couple of weeks, of NXT haven't really been like that must see for me. Normally, I'm side with NXT. I think they're the better show. But this week, I mean, it, it wasn't bad, but it wasn't good. You know what I mean? It was just like for and for a go home show for NXT, I usually expect a little bit more, and I think that's because. You know, over, in my opinion, over half the storylines and matches in NXT are a little bit bullshit. Like, the only two things that I care about is the two War Games matches. All the other feuds and everything else, to me, don't really excite me. So, I'm just a little excited for the pay-per-view, but for a go-home show, I was hoping for a little bit something better. I, I think that, like, you know, not having Finn Balor in, in the card, like, kind of, like, damages a lot. Like, you know, you need a big name. You need also, like, the NXT Championship being defended since it's your most important title. You need that title to be defended at every single pay-per-view, every single big show, and it's not happening. So for that reason, I think it's like a little bit like, you know, yes. not as good as it could be. A little weakened, we should say. But, you know, family, thank you so very much for all the subscriptions, comments. You know, thank you for the viewerships. We love you, and we're going to keep delivering. That's right, see? You know, don't forget, like Monday Night Raw with Jean-Paul, excellent review. Drew McIntyre against AJ Styles is going to be for TLC. Braun Strowman is injured. You know, uh, the writing team didn't know that Don Strowman was injured, so that's why they didn't give, like, an update on that. So you can tell that WWE is a freaking mess when it comes to, like, communication, like, unlike mostly, like, every single company in the world. But let's start, you know, just recognizing the, le the you know, somebody left died today, and that's also bad. You know, uh, Pat Patterson died, Jean Paul. So, you know, it's, it's very sad for all of us that, like, you know, he was the mastermind of the, of the Royal Rumble. He was pretty much the right-hand side of Vince McMahon. Throughout the 90s, throughout the Attitude Era, he contributed a lot with the development of a lot of superstars. So, you know, that's how the show started. You know, tribute to Pat Patterson. So, you know, I, I just want to th say that, like, in my case, I enjoy Pat Patterson Attitude Era with Gerald Briscoe when they won the Hardcore Championships, all of that when they were the Stooges. Oh, yeah, the Stooges. Yeah, yeah. The that Stooges. was good. Like you said, very influential for everything that he's done in the business, you know. So it, it was good that they honored him. And like you said, he was a right-hand man of Vince. So obviously they were going to have a big, you know, thing to honor him. And they played that, like, I did it my way, everything with, you know, that that was kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I, I think that... You know, every single Wednesday, like somebody really like like a celebrity or somebody that has name value has died. So like, let's hope that like the next Wednesday that you know is the end of that. But you know, that's what we have at the beginning. So rest in peace, Pat Patterson. We you know we will think of you. So like the next time that started, like the show started with like Legado del Fantasma going against Damian Priest and Leon Ruff. I think this was okay. I think that it was a pretty good match. Uh, and also it's hyping up for like this match that we're going to have at NXT TakeOver War Games, and it's going to be the triple threat match. Neon Ruff, still the North American champion. I don't understand the why. The logic doesn't seem logic for me. And outside of the other two guys, Damian Priest and Johnny Gargano. I don't know why it's just like a singles match between the two of them, but we need this guy that is actually engaged to one of the NXT referees. So tell me about this. How did you like Did you like it? It's like uh, more of the same. Or like, no, I, I really didn't care for this match. And this was another thing too, you know, uh, NXT, they start off with a shit match in my opinion. And it just because you had Gargano on commentary who was just making dad jokes the whole time. And it's like, okay, you know, it's like we had Kevin Owens last week who didn't want to be here. And then we have Johnny Gargano now who's doing this. It's like, can we just have the normal commentary team, please? But thankfully it wasn't the whole night just this opening match, but the whole thing, it was obviously Damian Priest looked strong, dominating. I didn't like how he was just beating the shit out of Escobar a lot. I mean, Escobar hit a legit suicide dive, and he, he still looked good, especially when Leon Ruff was in there, but I thought he should have had, it looked a little bit stronger against Priest. I know they are pushing Priest, but, you know, Escobar is a champion on your roster, so, you know, try to present him a little legit just because some of your champions are complete jokes. doesn't mean Escobar has to be, but oh, yeah. you know, this, yeah. this was, this was, you know, it was okay, but like you said, it's just, you know, it's just building for the triple threat match. There's nothing at War Games for the Cruiserweights, at least nothing that I saw, so it's just like, hey, let's put these guys in this bullshit match where they're gonna lose and it means nothing for them, but you know, at the end of it, 
and a priest was setting up for the reckoning and then he stuck his arm out like he does his pose before he hits it um and then he tags in leon ruff and then priest hits the reckoning anyway frog splash that's pretty much the ending i thought up in my head i thought priest is gonna hit some move tag him in and then leon ruff gets the pin but instead leon ruff just you know he skipped a step and tagged himself in so you know, it, it was what it was, and I'm hoping they take the title off. I still, Sunday. you know, I, the only thing I got to say on that is, like, why is this guy delivering a frog splash? And like you said, 75 pounds of raw power can put away anybody. Well, that, well that's what he has. He, it has to be a, cro a flying cross body or something because the dude weighs, you know, a, a sack of potatoes weighs more than him. So he has to yeah. throw his entire body to at least cover somebody's shoulders, even, a, you know, another cruiserweight. Yes, so like you know, I wasn't too pleased with like that kind of like ending of the match or like that kind of a finisher. I I'm, I just don't understand it. You know, it didn't. And no, I, and and I can almost guarantee that Priest or Gargano, probably Priest, because that Gargano is a joke. His heel turn is a complete failure. The, the the title's probably going to Priest again on Sunday. Which if it as long as it's off Leon Ruff, I'm good. Yes, and as you guys can see, Wade Barrett was bad, so bad news, Barrett. So Jean Paul was uh, was happy. I was too because like he adds more excitement to it. He actually adds more information. He like he, his references are not so much pop culture, but it's more, for example, like later on in the main event when he when Raquel Gonzalez did a clothesline, you go, oh, JBL is going to be really proud of that. So he kind of like gets you in that wrestling by wrestling world. Mm -hmm. So I like that, and as you can see, the two ghosts. So is that kind of like a reference that we're gonna see some hell for Johnny Gargano? Maybe. I'm yeah. Not now, if sure these that. these two people need to unmask, and this needs to be something like we saw in AEW, I don't think you can you know be uh you know be as good as another white faced person who showed up on AEW. But like when these two ghost face unmask, then they need to you know it needs to be somebody legit because yeah. Halloween's over. So I'm like, why are they still wearing the Halloween <laughs> mask? You know, like we're almost on Christmas. Like they're already going through turkey, yeah. right? Yeah, like Thanksgiving's even done. So why are we still on Halloween? But, you know, I don't know. Like I said, as long as the title's off rough, I'm good. Yes, yeah. I mean, it needs to just be uh, done with it. So let's move on to, like, the next kind of, like, feud. is like it's going to be, of course, like the war games between the Undisputed Era and Pat McAfee and the Kings of NXT. So we got a special look at the Undisputed Era. And I, like you were mentioning, like, off camera, I really like this promo just because they were wearing suits. They were kind of like acknowledging themselves from like two years ago. It's like ever since we got here, we were dominating NXT by the past few weeks. It's been really rough for us. You know, ever since the last takeover when like a Rich Holland like injured Adam Cole and then, you know, he attacked like Fish. He attacked also uh, Roderick Strong and then Kyle O'Reilly lost that match against Finn Balor. So he's like the Undisputed Era have not been fulfilling the promise that they got us used to last year when they hold all the gold and all of that. So pretty much they're acknowledging themselves as like, well, War Games is like our playground, so we're going to win. And I kind of like, like you said, like uh, the stuff that like Bo uh, Bobby Fish said, that was really cool. And also how like, they acknowledge themselves, but they know that like supposedly, you know, quote unquote is like their biggest challenge is like Pat McAfee and the new Kings of NXT. So I like this. Yeah, the promo, uh, when the Undisputed Era is faced, they kind of remind me like they're not as like badass, and you can still be badass and be faced. They're all like, so we're not legit anymore. They're like, we need to do some thinking. And then they're sitting there at the restaurant in their suits, and Bobby Fish is like, I've done enough thinking. He's like, we're fucking badass. We got to go out there and prove it. And I'm like, there. We see, that's the legitness. That's what you need to, don't be like, so be like, who the hell are we? Let's go out there and kick somebody's ass. And then that's where the promo eventually got to. So then I was like, okay, legit. And they showed, like you said, the highlight packages, everything, you know, hyping them up. Adam Cole talking in the background. So, like I said, I'm excited for the two War Games matches. So this oh, was yeah. good. And anytime you see a faction in suits, you know, that look, that's badass. Oh, yeah. yeah I, I love it. Like like you said, it's like it gives you, like, they're good, they're badasses also, but they're legit. You know, mm -hmm. we believe in them. You know, they're able to, like, like the hurt business. Them. Yes, how, how much more legit does the Hurt Business look since they all come out wearing suits? Well, like, they learn from evolution. Remember those mm -hmm. days from, yep. from the Four Horsemen, you know? You've been watching mm -hmm. a lot of WCW, like, old, old school wrestling. So, yeah, I like that. It needs to be done in that fashion. Why? Because it makes me think that, like, they're, they're, I should pay attention every time that they're out. So, exactly. you know, something that I don't want to pay attention is Cameron Grimes. Cameron Grimes! Why? Because he had a match against Jean Paul Egg. No, 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 never Jean Paul Egg against. Yeah, no, that, I mean that's hey, that's how legit I. You know, I'm not the first one to do the headband and the glasses, but I'm you know the one who does it the best. And of yeah, course, this, you know, this guy's got a he's got to copy my gimmick. But at least he doesn't wrestle with the headband on. So I'm like, okay, <laughs> so legit. that's fine. You 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 yeah. forgive for that, right? Yeah. You forgive him. So like this was like a pretty quick match. It's Cameron Grimes and like he fought a, 
like I said, August Gray, and then he did cave in, done, and he was like pretty much setting now for like whether it's going to be the strap match with Lester Loomis. So that was okay. I mean, like again, the feud for nothing, it makes me not want to care about it. And like you said, we they added so many stipulations, gimmick matches throughout this whole two months, three months that they've been feuding. So I don't really care. And then he strapped August Gray to like one of the, with the strap, he was like actually choking him or something. And then he turns around and Dexter Loomis is right there. So, and then he started beating the crap out of, like, uh, Cameron Grimes. And then we got to see this picture, Paul. Ah, uh, duh. Yeah, and, <laughs> and this, yeah. Happy like that, I'm going to leave the building so he can do the yeah. show and not me. But, like you said, I'm not going to get invested into something that is not going to, like, the winner is not going to receive anything. So, the, if the outcome is still the same, I don't care if I win or if I lose. Yeah, I, this, I mean, if you would have had William Regal say, because the whole time Cameron Grimes is trying to get out of this match, he doesn't want to, or just this feud, he doesn't want to go against Dexter Loomis. If you would have had William Regal say, well, you know, the winner of this strap match will get the challenge, you know, the winner of the triple threat, you know, for the North American Championship. Oh, okay, now this feud has some meaning. Now maybe Cameron Grimes will actually want to fight Dexter Loomis instead of running away all the time. And, you know, th then it gives some meaning to it. But a feud like this with no meaning, when you had, like, the zombie graveyard haunted house match, now the strap match, then the or the blindfold match, and they had yeah. everything else, and it's like, you know, we don't care. So that's, you know, if, if you would add the title shot, it at least gives you a reason to care, but... We'll see. I mean, this strap match, it's, it's not going to be legit because it's not. there's not going to be any color. There's not going to be, you know, anything crazy. It's it, it's just a gimmick. Like I said, the only two things I'm really looking forward to are the War Games matches. Yeah, yeah. Well, and then like, give me the winner here. Give me the winner. So I'll, I'll give you mine. Okay, I got to go. Uh, Loomis, they, 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 they just dropped the ball on Cameron Grimes. I would have had him be North American champion already. Yeah, but well, I'm, I'm going to go actually against you just because I want Grimes to win. And then I and that should kind of pull him to like let's if you said like your prediction right it would be praised as the north american then he can go against cameron Grimes for that title so that would yeah. be my prediction on that so let's have it like that like, hopefully and like <laughs> they don't give us this match anymore because nobody wants to see it i've seen a lot of comments online people are complaining why are we still watching this we want something different please wwe gives us something different so let's just move on to jake atlas jake atlas had a match against tony knees you know the the, the premier loser yeah, the premier loser. Yep, the premier athlete loser. I mean, this is a good match. Was pretty good, and like, but like you said, like Tony Nese is just seen as a freaking loser in the WWE. I don't understand why. He should be, you know, he should have some kind of momentum. He's a good wrestler. He was a former Cruiserweight champion, so I don't understand the idea behind I can't, it. Yeah, I can't even think of like an old school person to compare him to. That it's like this guy is so good, but he never wins. Like oh, he yeah. just, he's just used to get people over. Like I can't even think of like I, I can't even think of a jobber that was that good. Is it, I mean, because this, because this guy's legit, but he's treated like a jobber. Yep, and and pretty much they're using this match to like kind of propel or elevate. You know, remember those words, elevate, mm -hmm. like Jake Atlas, and you know, of course, in the picture of picture, we have like Pat McAfee and the Kings of NXT were arriving to the building, so he's legit. Oh yeah, and I mean, they're not wearing suits, but at least they look badass enough to like pull out a heel character. But in the end, like you said, it was pretty much like the uh, car wheel DDT. And then boom, one, two, three, he gets the win. You see a pissed off Jake Atlas. You see the intensity. And like you mentioned to me, is that when he cuts the promo, he actually says what like every single wrestler that loves this sport and understands the mentality of a wrestler has to say. Hey, I've been losing, yeah, Tommaso Ciampa kicked my ass. I haven't not been my, my, my best. But right now I'm going to use this win to keep winning more matches and then go after Santos Escobar and the Cruiserweight Championship. So that's how you deliver a promo. That's, yeah, what you that's, what, that's, what you, that's what you get into wrestling for. You get into wrestling for the money, you know, the fame. The chip. You know, yeah, yeah, and, and the belts. Yes. You know, that's, that's what you want. You get in, That's you don't get in here to be like, oh, I'm going to feud with this guy in a haunted house match. Or like, oh, you know, you're, you're trying to bang my wife, Velveteen Dream. And it's like, we all know that was a gimmick because he don't like women or people over 18. So, you know, that, that, was, that was clearly, a, you know, a gimmick. But... It's Jake Atlas legit promo. I like this. That's what wrestlers need to do. I want the belt. I'm here for the belt. You know, I'm going to keep winning and you're going to give me my title shot. And don't you think that like you're giving yourself purpose? You know, yeah. It's like, okay, I'm going to, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm chasing. Yeah. Rather than every single week I show up and nobody even knows what I'm there. Mm -hmm. So I like that. I, I really like that. And good for Jake Atlas. He's actually getting some purpose on NXT. Talking about people with purpose. Oh, right there, Pat McAfee and the Kings of NXT, Danny Birch and on Lorcan and the guy, and you said March Simpson. No, no, no. No. Yep. Pete Dunn <laughs> right there. Uh, pretty good promo. Like, I, I like the line that you said. It's like, oh, hey, Vic Joseph. Oh, yeah, you suck. <laughs> so, like, Pat McAfee understands how to be a heel. 
and he pulls it off, I think, beautifully. I think that, like, he can just, knows how to get people pissed off, he knows what buttons to push, he knows how to get you upset, annoying, and he got a really good promo. Yeah, I like the promo. He pretty much is saying, like, oh, yeah, you know, look at this thing we saw with Undisputed Air. They were in some restaurant, but they had to sit in the back in their little cheap suits, drinking box wine out of glasses, trying to be legit. You know, so he's just cutting them up. And I love when he insults the fans, too. He's like, all oh, you fat losers sitting in your mom's basement. When you guys watch war games on Sunday, you know, you're going to see the kings of NXT destroy the Undisputed Air. And just, just a good promo. And he, you know, he puts over all the guys on his team, obviously, and I, I, like, I'm like, i excited for this match. I think McAfee plays the heel, like the shithead heel, ca- not really cowardly, but just really annoying and just like, oh, you want to see this guy get his ass kicked. That's the yeah. thing. Like you said, he knows how to push the buttons, but like, all, all obviously, it's all like a kayfabe. It's all a work he knows because he's saying exactly what, you know, to say to piss you off, and that's what's so good about it. And yeah, he knows, you know, he yeah. knows how to deliver, he knows like how to cocky, you know, how to be arrogant. Uh, j- just his, just his mannerisms, like when he walks out, he has that strut, like, oh yeah, you know, I'm so legit, he wears like a turtleneck, you know, who wears turtlenecks, like stuck up assholes, like the yeah. Miz, you know, like, yeah, like exactly. those are those people who wear it, so this is good. And see what he says, he says, this Sunday is about Pete Dunne, the man that has had the longest reign as NXT champion, and also like about these two guys that like have been in this business for more than 15 years and there's a Danny Burge and only Lorcan and then Pete Dunne grabs away like the, he takes the mic and he goes this Sunday it will be the end on the Undisputed Era so what else do you want? Match already like it's already hyped up for me like yeah. you said I'm, I'm looking forward to this at least because it's like you are clear baby face against and a heel I'm really like looking forward to see this match I think they're going to give us a great show outside of McAfee like the other seven guys are pretty good I mean he I'm not saying he's not good enough but like I don't know how much experience he's going to have in a match like this you know you need to be I think have more years in the business to be able to pull up something like this but hey at least the promo work is done for me oh yeah and like you said all all the other seven guys will be able to and McAfee's not a slouch but I know what you're saying but like all the other seven guys in there as good as they are you won't even notice it. They'll be able yeah. to carry him and everything if, if there's any type of struggle or bump in the road. So this match right is fantastic. Right so like, give me like your winner quick. I got it. Uh, I mean, the I undisputed era. They didn't. Right yeah, you, you put me on the spot. They didn't lose. They lost last year, right? Yes. Oh, my conf- oh, yeah, yeah, I'm going to say they lost yeah. last year. I almost want to say they lose this year. Just to, You got to get the Kings over, but. I don't know. I mean, Undisputed Era, Babyface are kind of losing. They look kind of like shit a little bit in my eyes and probably in the general public's eyes. So I'm going to go Undisputed Era. I'm going to say I don't see them losing two years in a row. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to go with this just Undisputed Era just because, like you said, they've been treated a little crappy and they're pretty much like the most important th- team in NXT. So they need to win again. So I think that like I'm going to go with Undisputed Era. I wouldn't be upset if the Heels win, though. No, because neither would I. Maybe, let's say, like, the Undisputed Era is time for all four of them to go to the main roster to just start jobbing to everybody else. But, you know, let's hope that's not the case. So, talking about jobbers, let's talk about Imperium. Now, well, not too much of a jobber, but, like, Ever Rise where we're supposed to fight the Grizzly Young Veterans, as you guys can see in the picture, but Imperium shows up one more time. They're not really in NXT UK, which kind of bothers me a little bit. Then they actually attack Ever Rise. And they had a match against the Grizzly Veterans. They cut a promo. It's like, hey, you know, we're here to get those titles back. Grace Angle, like, they took the titles away from us. But it's time to get our titles back. And we're going to get that from Birch and Lonnie Larkin. So they got a match. And this was, like, the best match of the night, I think. I really enjoyed this. It was a oh, good, yes. old-fashioned tag team match. You know, Grizzly Veterans are pretty good. Like you said in the NXT before, they Shawn Michaels loved them. And that's probably why they stayed in America and they didn't go back to the UK. But I like this. At least for me, I was a pretty good tag team action right there. Yeah, this it was the best match of the night by far. My favorite guy is, he, and I feel like he's underrated and he's never going to get pushed, is Fabian Eichner. I always say he reminds me, he like he looks like Kurt Angle and Cesaro had a baby. <laughs> like this, I mean, this guy, and, and he wrestles like that too. And, you know, he's so legit. And, you know, Marcel Bartel's just as good. It's Imperium is so good. Grizzled Young Veterans are obviously great as well. And what you touched on earlier is, you know, the, none of these teams are on NXT UK. And it's like, okay, like, that's fine to have them on, you know, this show instead. But I feel like they would benefit more being on, or NXT UK would benefit from them more. Because it's like, one, the UK fans are watching that show. They're UK wrestlers. And also, they could, re- they could give the rub to these, you know, 
maybe more unknown teams that are on NXT UK. It's like, oh, you know, Pretty Deadly is wrestling the Grizzled Young Veterans instead of wrestling some team that we don't know. You know what, yeah. I, you know what I'm getting at? Yeah. They can get, like, the rub from yeah. these teams with name value. But, no, this match was really good. But, you know, did it have a good ending? To no. Like, oh, okay, did a, team, did, did, a, did, a team, did a team win? And then, okay, now we know who is maybe going to challenge, you know, the tag team champs after war games. Do we get anything like that? No. After no. Was, after Fabian Eichner does a big cross body and, you know, takes everybody out on the outside, which we saw that spot again later on in the night. So I'm like, really? Like, we have to see it twice. But And he takes everybody out. And then Everrise comes out. Like, you see the picture here? Boom. DQ. And it's like, okay. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, like, are we gonna get a triple threat match? Like next, a triple threat tag team match? Because and I fucking hate the way WWE does those, where it's yeah. like, oh, you can only have two two guys in the ring at once instead of all three, and it's like, but Should I don't, I don't know. Each one hundred percent of the world attack. Yeah. But yeah. and also like, why the most crappy team? You know, the most bullshit team takes away the other two teams that are consolidated. Yeah, and, 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 if, and if you're going to have people be like, oh, well, they got to build up Ever Rise and stuff. Okay, yeah, I get that. You And, and I want them to build up Ever Rise because they're an actual team. They're not just two singles guys thrown together. But you haven't been building them up. You've been having them be jobbed out and get their asses kicked. And then you just thrust them into here with these main event tag teams. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, and also like ever the name says ever rise, so they will never rise. Like, you know, it's just to me, it's just it's just yeah, yeah, like, yeah, you, that's... you use two great teams and you know a great match, and this is like you stop it just to get these two guys over for no reason. I just don't get it. I just don't get it. But let's go to you know the next part of the show. It was and we got lo- another promo by Zaya Lee. Boa and their master, I think, is like Mister Miyagi or Master. Oh Boa. yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I saw what the I saw. He was like ah da. Ah, yeah. that, every time they were going in the water, it, it, he's like, like ah, subscribe. That. It's like subscribe, you know, yeah. subscribe, and they were like, they were like, uh, what underwater, right? They're yeah, like, yeah. I don't know how the how cod how cold. Well, well see, they, they kept popping up every time Rope Break uploads a new video, so that's yeah. why it was like every ten seconds they kept popping out of the water. Yes, you know, you know who else I also popped up, you know, like a spoiler oh, alert. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, <laughs> Wait, <laughs> what, 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 what does that say? AEW. That's for tomorrow. That? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It says AEW. So you know, spoiler alert. You know, somebody like that wears like like you said, painting and all of that. It's not Darby Allen. It's not Jim Hardy. Is the original one, not not us. But you know, he popped up. But like, this is very intriguing. I'm like how Zia Lee, you know, Bo are presented. And also, like, who's the real master? You know, the main the master man out of all of this. Like you said, we saw long nails, but, like, it's kind of like the girl from the ring, from, like, the movie, you know, like, uh, like we don't see the, like, the face, it's just the mm. hair, the eyes. I- intriguing. Intriguing, to say the least. Yeah, for, and, right now they have me hooked, but I, if the payoff is shit, then, you know, it was all for nothing. Yeah, yeah. So we'll yeah, like, the, but but right now they have me hooked. Maybe one week or two weeks tops, and then just like a mass, or like at least reveal who the hell is it. Because if it is Scarlet or, <laughs> or somebody kind of like out of the way, I'm, I'm just gonna be really upset if it's not like you said, if it doesn't pay off. Something that at least is not paying off for me. I don't know how you feel about it. Is like we're gonna go to class. I know it's a little late. It's ten thirty at night, but like we're gonna go to class with our boy Timothy. That's all he knows how to do because if he has a match with somebody that is like more name value than him, he loses. So he's about to start the class. But like Jean Paul also like you always interrupt no I'm kidding. <laughs> you know, he just Tommaso Ciampa shows up. And, and like at the beginning of the promo, like he's like, Oh, I don't have anything against you. So um, there's nothing that we're gonna do. I don't want anything against you. But like they're clearly hyping their match for NXT takeover war games. And you know, Ciampa is right there and they had a little bit of interactions, but in the end Ciampa is attacked. By like uh, Timothy Thatcher and also the other member of the of his school, <laughs> one of his teammates did something because they were talking about distraction, right? That was the team. That was the theme of like the whole thing. And <laughs> I mean, that was good that like he acknowledged that. I don't know how you felt, but it's like, oh, in NXT, a lot of people lose his matches because of distractions. So I was like, okay, finally acknowledges that. But what did you think about this? Yeah, the whole this feud, if you give it to me on paper. And you say, oh, we're going to have a match between Tommaso Ciampa and Timothy Thatcher. I'm whacking. I, I love these two guys in the ring, both legit. And even that promo Ciampa cut a couple weeks ago about guys being crybabies. They're not old school. He's the old school mentality. He was trained by Harley Race. So, you know, that, that I love. And both these guys have that old school vibe. But then you get into actually seeing this feud play out on television and it's like oh my god this is awful the you know thatcher beat matt riddle that should have been the big you know the jumping point for him okay now he goes from mid card kind of the main event 
It's like, oh, you know, is he going to challenge Finn Balor? Is he going to go off to North American? Is it going to be anything? No. You know, it's just bullshit. And then he has this feud with Champa, which should be good, but he probably won't win. He's probably going to lose, and then what? Like I said, he's he's the Elias of NXT. He has a gimmick. Every week he comes out, whether he's playing the guitar or it's Thatch is Thatch can. He comes out with the gimmick, he gets interrupted, and he loses. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like, I, I, I agree with you. It's just like the fact what that... What did like, Shakespeare say? A rose by any other name would still smell just as sweet, you know, and that's what the rose is here. Whether you're playing guitar or teaching somebody how to wrestle, you're going to lose and you're a loser, so... Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. you're still, like, considered the same guy. And that's my that's my point, is like, like you were mentioning, he kind of had a, like, after Matt Riddle, if he would have got, hey, a Gwen over, over Champa, over, like, you know, Keith Lee, over, like, you know, like, kind of those guys, I would be, okay, this guy has some opportunity. But every time, remember, with Valorant and then the other takeover, done. You know, Priest, done. Every time that he had some kind of opportunity, done. Always. So, right now, why am I supposed to mm-hmm. believe that like, they're going to push him the right way? So and, and, and one thing, there was a rumor, because I, it made me think of who else he could feud with. There is a rumor. An unnamed top male superstar in NXT has COVID. Who, yes. didn't, who, who have we not seen? Koshida. Yes. So there you Ko- go. Koshida might have COVID, so that that would be another legit feud because that's the whole Champa thing with that. You know, that's kind of a thing going on. So who knows? Maybe they'll kind of drag this feud out. Maybe the winner will go against Koshida again. And but there, there, again, go back to Jake Atlas. There has to be a purpose to all this. Are you going after the title, or are you just want your time on TV and you're good? That's the word that we're looking for, purpose. And like, well, you're always the best booker, so that's why you know why you might be probably right. Because I wasn't thinking about Kushida, I was thinking about Velveteen Dream. But there you go. I think Kushida, well, it was said that like in the report that like neither one of them was actually booked for War Games. So the pay-per-view is going as planned. But mm-hmm. really good thinking right there. So now let's move on to the main event, shall we? And that is going to be Shotzi Blacker against Raquel Gonzalez for the advantage at the NXT TakeOver War Games. You know, whoever wins, the same thing that they did last week for the men, same thing for the women. And it was another ladder match, like you said. And again, the teams are like on the top, like just waiting for the goal, like kind of cheering up, like each one of the, you know, like the, the respective like partners, all of that. Ah, you know, good match. But I just don't like the idea, like the, having all the girls right there in the like that platform, and I'm like, really? And yeah, like, oh, I, I don't, I don't oh, like the platform man. thing at all. I, and to be honest, I really don't like the advantage thing at all. I don't know why you just can't. You don't need to have an advantage match with like a ladder and a contract or whatever the hell was in the briefcase. Probably nothing. It's probably just the middle finger, you know, a cutout of somebody giving the middle finger, like screw you. But <laughs> yeah. like this, just do a coin flip. Or something at the start. Don't like it's pointless and it's it's war games. Were there advantage matches for war games back in you know the nineties? No, you know what I mean. Like you just you have the match. You didn't need advantage, like you said. You yeah. just have the match. You just you have, have the match. match. Oh my god! It, it, it's, it's 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 doing too much. But if you know if I I don't know like what you said, the match was good, but they just they do too much shit with it. I I really like Raquel. But this was another one like last week's main event. You knew Pete Dunn was going to win. You knew the heels were going to have the advantage. And watching this, it's like they're not going to give the advantage to both heels. You know, especially yeah. when you have Hulk Hogan, Ray Ripley on the face team. It's like, okay, they're probably going to have the advantage. They're probably going to look strong. And, you know, Shotzi won here. But, you know, take us through the ending because it was, again, it wasn't like, you know, most of the matches. It wasn't and, a and clean finish. And thank you for mentioning that because, yeah, right, you see, we have, like, the Mr. Woman right there, right next mm-hmm. to Rhea Ripley. So that's why I have the picture up because it was like, who's going to be that woman? And, of course, I'm a dumbass. So I said, you know, Tegan is legit. Let's have it there. You know, she's, she's healed now. Is this fine? It's not healed. John Paul is like, don't be bullshit. Like, read the stuff, right? So I was like, okay, I'm sorry. Is and this this woman shows up? No, not that woman. Hold on, there you go. Yeah, yeah is there it right? is. Is he sure right? <laughs> you know, because of course, like you said, distraction towards the end of the match. And uh, what Indy Harwell? Indy Harwell was kind of like she brought the ladder for all the girls to come down, and they were helping like Raquel. So by Io shows up and she starts helping out the faces because Amber Moon and Rhea Ripley had already shown up. So to even the odds. So then she got a beautiful moon soul this time. At least she hit it right. So that was cool. I, well, like I was going to say, but between like the other seven women or six women that were there in the security guard, she had enough bodies to hit. So she would have yeah. missed that one. Then there's something. You wrong. know, like there was a lot of room for her to actually hit the moon soul. Yeah. So that was good. And then that gave the advantage to Shotzi to finally climb and grab the you know, briefcase, like you said, that I don't know why there's a briefcase there. <laughs> I just don't understand. It, that. it should just be a pin. 
Yeah, just, just, like, uh, and, like what's in the briefcase? Whatever, is, is, yeah. is, it, is, the, is there a key in the briefcase, and that's how you can unlock the, the pod at War Games so you can get down to the cage faster? Like, what's yeah. in the briefcase? It just, it just doesn't make any... And, you know, the one thing I did like, though, it was, like, the coffin drop that she did, uh, the um, shot she did on Raquel, so kind of, like, going the Darby Allen way, and I was like, okay, that's mm -hmm. legit. And even uh, Way Barrett acknowledged that. He's, oh, it's a, cool, it's a cool coffin drop, you know, back and all of that. So I was thinking because just of the shape of the picture, and you know, again, I'm going to be bullshit one more time. I was thinking Beth Phoenix, but <laughs> okay, you know, because I just go with like the WWE. I, I try to have my mentality. I mean, that would, uh, that would be badass, and I would almost believe it if Beth Phoenix was actually like in the same state as the, like, you know, that like, yes. filming NXT is, but I think she's at home probably in her pajamas, so, like doing a Zoom call. Yes. A lot of this is going on, so. Yeah, it's doing the stream yard with Rupert. Yeah. Uh, oh, that I, would be I, legit. I agree with you, but like, you know, the end of the show is like all the girls just celebrating, you know, like all the, the faces, and this is going to be good, and so let's talk about this really quick. Who do you, who wins here? I, I think the, the heels would benefit more from winning, but again, you're going to have the NXT Women's Champ. You have the returning Ember Moon. You have Shotzi Blackheart as a rising star, and you have Hulk Hogan herself, Rhea Ripley. So I don't see the faces losing again. I see another strong performance, unless there's some kabuki-ish, some bullshit going on where there's another turn by the baby faces, which I hope doesn't happen. Don't do that two years in a row, please. But I, I think the heels would benefit more, but like I said, I got to go with the faces. I mean, like like we talk about, like you said, the undisputed there might win, so I'm gonna go with the heels on this one. Like you said, I I want I need to see Tony Storm winning. You know, like that cake is just you know unbelievable. There's <laughs> just no way that that can lose. And like you said, like he push Candice a little bit, push like all the girls. They need a little bit of uh, something because we are rapidly like, eh, she might be called up anytime soon. Amber Moon, she's still gonna chase him after Io. And Shatsy, you know, just is just in that middle ground. She's comfortable. She doesn't need to go for the title, but yet she can have feuds with any one of the other four. So I think that like the yeah, and, and, and if you they really want to make this match interesting, I would have Rhea Ripley actually be the first one to be pinned in this match. Yeah, I would, I would I would have all eight women in the ring have something where they do some crazy like finisher, 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 finish like they all hit their finisher on her. And then pin her, and then that would be like, oh, okay. Then you can have it where the baby faces fight, and it's one on one. And then maybe you have Candice pin, you know, Shotzi or whoever the Candice pin EO or or however you want to do it. But like to eliminate Rhea early on, I think would make it more even, just because I feel the face team is so stacked. Yes, yes, and and more maybe Rhea turns heel. And that would be that to me. That would be bullshit because I just because I think her days in NXT are numbered. If they're numbered, but I mean, if she's staying, that you know, hey, have them turn, and then you can have something more, prolong this thing a little bit more. But I agree with you. I think that, like, they just need to take her away of the match, and they have the other women show up more. You know, yeah. Shine, like Amber Moon, give it to Tony Storm. Just because too. of how good she was last year. She doesn't yeah, need they, to they be the star again. You know, give him a little bit more to do. Even Shotzi, give her. Because Shotzi's the captain, so she's yeah. supposed to lead, right? She's supposed to lead her team. So, you know, that was the go-home show for NXT yes. family. Thank you so very much. Great show. And we're really looking forward to the two Wars game matches. And also, like, we're looking forward to Black Sabbath and Warpix. Nene, mm, mm, mm. he loves it. I, I love when they actually add metal with wrestling. They go so well together. It's just a great mm -hmm. combination. So don't forget, you know, subscribe. Hit the button for all notifications. Where else can they find us? You can find us on Rope Break on Facebook, the OG Rope Break on Twitter, Original Rope Break on Instagram, and of course, right here for the number one podcast in the YouTube wrestling community, the Original Rope Break. Family, thank you so very much. Tomorrow, AW NXT UK, always stocked up. You know, our car never is like we never made car. We never like first man. Mm -hmm. Always main event. Family, take care. One more thing that we gotta say, and that is. Uh, 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 uh,